Thank you so much for joining me. This is a big question we're tackling here. It's called the missing uh, millions. It, of course, refers to the huge amount of women who are not participating in the workforce. But we're exploring the economics here. So the, the missing millions is, you know, it's the millions of dollars in GDP, perhaps, that countries are missing out. It's the millions of dollars of bottom line profit that companies are missing out on by not engaging with this problem. So we're going to look at all of the problems that we see around this globally. Um, we've got some, um, uh, some statistics on this, of course. We are data driven. Um, so we can see the extent of this problem all around the world. I think we've got a slide that can show this. You know, the problem um, really does stretch globally. This is the G20. And we've got the countries ranked by the uh, female labor force participation rate. Korea doing pretty well up there at 74. Sorry to say India comes in almost at the bottom here at 24%, just above Saudi Arabia. But you know, even the United States, the world's biggest economy, only 56% of the female population are participating in the workforce. So we can see the scale of the problem. But I think, first of all, I want to explore what we think the reasons for this are, how to understand this problem. And we've got a poll to sort of kick this off. Um, so if everybody could get their phones uh, ready and vote on this question. And what we want to do is we're going to play the blame game here. Who is <laughs> to blame for the missing millions? Who is it? Is it the fault of companies? Um, is it the fault of the government? I'm afraid the minister isn't still here, but um, uh, do we want to point the finger of blame at them? Uh, is it society as a whole, the social pressures that um, women face? Or is it all of those things? Maybe it's all of those things, and we can explore some of that. So please do cast your votes, and look, there we are. It's a broad, such a broad problem, and we can see most people think um, that all of these areas are to blame. So let's start, I think. And, um, you know, why don't I start with you, Namrita? You know, you're focused on the Indian market with companies. What is the problem? Who's to blame from your perspective? Why are not enough women getting into work? So I think it is all of the above. Um, I think in our case, uh, society in India plays a big role. Uh, we're a patriarchal society. We've seen a very interesting statistic that as women uh, get more educated and as, as their family income goes up, they should actually have the ability to get back to work. But uh, the more highly educated the woman is, the less likely she is to work after she has children. So that's very much a society-driven uh, thing. Secondly, um, companies are doing a lot around making the opportunities equal for women. Mm. But the culture of inclusivity, because we are a patriarchal society, is not quite there. And third, the government infrastructure, if you want to work, but you're, you're commuting an hour and a half each day, um, you want to work from home, but the Wi-Fi doesn't work, all of those create issues with women working. Mm. So all three need to be fixed. Yeah. The big issue is um, society. And it's the big one here. Yeah. But would you echo that, Malika? I mean, you, you've got a viewpoint around the globe for hire, employing uh, you know, more than 100,000 people. Yep. Where, what are, where are the biggest problems from your perspective? Yeah, I would say um, from a hire perspective, it's interesting. I shared last night that, um, that half of our executive team is women, which is terrific. And, um, and when we look at our organization as a whole, we're about 50% women, just shy of 50% women. So on the surface, that sounds really good. But when you look at it up and down the organization, you see we're, we're actually doing a pretty good job in most places of hiring women in. What we're not doing as well at is pulling them through. Yep. Uh, so our big focus and issue, and I think uh, this isn't unique to high, this is a lot of companies, is that even when you're doing um, and finding women to come into the workforce, helping women to grow and to have uh, careers that allow them to sort of continue to grow and rise and rank is a huge focus for us. And that's the same all around the world? It's the question, same everywhere around the world, yeah. Maria, how about for you, for Nielsen? Are you seeing the same, the same question? It's about the same. Uh, actually, in Nielsen, what we do is we measure uh, what population, uh, diverse populations, uh, what matters for them. And uh, we try to make sure that we have the truth in terms of what we report back. Mm -hmm. And what we see more and more is actually in the industry that we serve, uh, we see that uh, the, the blame is everywhere. And it's more around uh, what you represent. What is the image of, of the, 
the women that you give yeah. uh, through the media industry, uh, mm. film, content producers, uh, publishers, news, uh, magazines, and, uh, and TV. So how you represent women in stereotypes, and how can that change to, to help? I mean, that ties back to the social question, doesn't it? Sure. You know, stereotypes. I mean, here in India as well, you know, when you look at advertising and you look at where advertising companies are, or you look at the movie industry, for instance, look at the posters. Yeah. Um, I was admiring near my hotel, you know, there was Frithik Joshan with a machine gun and a lady in rather scantily clad. I mean, you know, this is selling the movie, right? Yeah. And I mean, where are, the, where are the positive messages about um, gender in the media, particularly in India? Is, do you see any sign of, of progress? Um, not enough. There are a few uh, women as the main um, protagonist movies, mm. but very few. And, uh, and no, there is not enough of mm. positive spin. Post, the, post a lot of the media frenzy after some of the more egregious rape cases mm. we had, you did see a couple of advertisements talking about, you know, it's how you bring up your boys that right. makes them into the men that you want them to be, but very little. Yeah. For the, for the state of society, very, very little. But companies around the world are having to engage with this question, aren't they? They're having to present a different image yeah. about themselves. I mean, is this something Hart is, is, is engaged in? It is, and it's true not just for how we think about how we present women, but how we think about how we present all people, right? right? And when you think about a business like Hyatt, where our business is welcoming groups like this, into properties and guests from all walks of life, um, all aspects of diversity. And so it's a huge focus for us to make sure that, uh, that our colleagues reflect that diversity and that they are prepared to welcome mm. people from all sorts of backgrounds. It is our business, and so it's one of the reasons why it's such a big focus for us, because if we don't get it right, uh, it impacts the bottom line. Yeah. Okay, well, I, I want to get into some specifics on this, right? Because I think we don't have a huge amount of time. And yeah. for the audience, you know, what are, with all of your experience, collective experience with companies, what works? What changes the culture within companies and can actually start to move some of this data, get these percentages up and see some of the economic growth? We saw that slide just came up, which showed the potential upside if we can increase the numbers. And you can see here, if the gender participation gap was closed by just 25%, that's the impact on GDP. We're seeing a 9% uptick in India, India's best place to benefit from this. So what can companies do? And maybe, Marie, you can start. What are some of the actions that have worked best? Yes, yeah, so actually what we see in the world of media, uh, whether this is coming from advertisers or publishers or a content producer, we see more and more interest in understanding the reality. So uh, the data that we provide, we see more and more pressure to make sure that uh, the companies can use true data. Because if you don't represent the diversity of what women and gender and, and uh, any diverse population is expecting, then you can't really change on the, on the right basis. So we see the whole industry looking at uh, getting the data that helps them understand the reality of the facts. From the reality of the facts, then they can make decisions. And with data, they can actually measure the impact of the decisions that they've been making. So we see that happening. I give you an example, a very concrete one. Uh, in the US, we're working with the Gina um, uh, Davis Institute, who is looking at the number of women represented into family films. And uh, this index, uh, we showed that last year, actually, we, we reached parity, at least in the US, between uh, women and uh, men represented into family films. However, the stereotypes on the way they are represented mm -hmm. uh, is something that uh, content producers want to work on. Um, your point on the government, uh, the UK government recently, uh, mm -hmm. so not the government, but the, the UK Association for Advertising, uh, recently uh, have put a legislation and they are banning, yes. banning some ads that are actually showing stereotypes. So these are things that are happening yes. based on facts. Yes, in case people may not have seen this, but two adverts were banned in the United Kingdom recently. One showed a, a, a one for uh, stereotyping a man for being bad at childcare, yeah. and the other one for mm. showing that a woman wasn't particularly active or something, you know. And they were removed from the airways. It feels like we're a long way from that in much of the world. Yeah. But that is a very, that's, that's a starting. pretty progressive yes. regulatory measure exactly. yeah. that can really change the narrative mm. in terms yeah. of the public. Mm. I would, um, I'd build on that just by saying that the th this theme around data is hugely important. 
Mm. Um, and I think from a company and a corporation standpoint, understanding your data, understanding where women are in your organization, how they're moving um, is hugely important and tracking it and measuring it. We found that to be a part of the solution for us. I think the other thing um, that we're trying to do is to expose women earlier in their, in their career to what possibilities exist for them. So one of the things we, we focus on is general managers at our properties. That's a, a very senior role for us and one where we have a much lower participation of women than we'd like. Um, and so we've done a lot of work to try to create venues for more junior women to meet female general managers and to see people who have done those roles and are doing them successfully so they have role models. I think you do have to, sometimes you have to see it to be it, right? right. Or to see it to even believe you can be it. And exactly. so that's something really tangible in terms of making sure women have access to role models. Yeah. Um, and then I echo the data. I mean, this is point. a huge issue, isn't it? And I guess when you're doing recruitment for top level as well, um, you know, how much do corporations see the value of this? When they say hiring for a really top job, do they say, you know what, I want you to find me a female candidate as well on the slate, so at least then we can make a choice? Uh, they do, and they are increasingly seeing it. It's our challenge is to find the f uh, senior female mm. candidates because there are very few. Um, but, but I am seeing change, and I do see the women who graduated from business school, say, five years ago, there are many more of them in the workplace than perhaps when I graduated 25 years mm. ago. So things are changing um, rapidly. I see a big change with um, a slow but big change uh, with the CEOs of companies because mm. as their daughters who have been educated, who are That's ambitious, want to get into the career and workforce, suddenly they start thinking differently. And when the tone changes at the top, the tone changes through the organization. Right. So I think the most important thing is that senior business leaders need to have more daughters, <laughs> and the world will change very fix. rapidly. Not a, not a very quick fix, but we can, <laughs> <laughs> we can encourage At least 20 that. years down the line, <laughs> yes, exactly. we'll fix. Exactly. I mean, we heard the uh, minister this morning, if everyone was listening, you know, she was quite uh, clear that she didn't need a mentor, she said. Yeah. I just made it on my own. Do you think that's practical these days, Mary Marie? Uh, you know, you, we, need to, we, we recently done a, a survey uh, which is called uh, Wise Up to Women. And, and it's about exactly that. It's about what do women think uh, about their situation and uh, what are the tips that are giving companies and governments to actually improve uh, the overall gender equality. And there are a couple of points here that, that are very, uh, still uh, very astonishing. The first one is that when you ask uh, them, the women and the male, uh, the percentage of time they think, they're, you know, the percentage of them that are spending in household duties. So the women will tell you 89% of them are either primary responsible or actually helping, whereas the men will, will tell you 42% of them only uh, are participating. And from that, this is giving the general uh, perception of women being overworked uh, at work at home in their daily duty. And one key thing that, that, that can happen to improve that is actually that companies lean in and help with rules that's being implemented from the top, uh, a different way of working so mm -hmm. that women can progress their career while still having a life uh, outside. So the companies need to put in place a whole different way of people conducting their time, right? I mean, Often women, for instance, might come back for a maternity leave. We were talking about this in, yeah. the, in the green room. And they maybe go down to four days a week. Exactly. Uh, right? So, yeah. and, but they'll take a 20% pay cut from yeah. that, yes. right? I, I was sharing that I did that when I... <laughs> but you'll do the same job, won't you? Yes, you'll I, get the job yeah. done. I did do the same job. <laughs> in four days. And presumably on that fifth day, you're on your email anyway, right? Yeah. So it's quite a good deal for the companies, no? It was, but it was also a good deal for me because it gave me the ability to come back to a job that I loved, but mm. also to feel like I still could pick up my two-year-old from pre-K, mm. um, or not pre-K, pre-daycare, uh, um, and not feel guilty about it. So yeah. it, it helped me and it helped the company. Um, and the company was, were encouraging of this? They were at least supportive. supportive. This was not Hyatt, this was no. another company. <laughs> uh, but they were, they were supportive and, um, and, and, it, and it kept me, 
in the workforce when yep. if they had said no, I probably would have left the workforce at that time, at least yep. for a period of time. So it kept me working. Uh, it also kept me with that company because I yep. knew I was with a company that was willing to provide me with that kind of flexibility. So you feel more loyal as a result sure. of that support. Do you think enough companies in India are thinking about this, the benefit of capturing women after they've had the family and they've taken a few years out? I think quite a few companies are thinking about it. They're all struggling in different ways. Uh, I have two examples I can give you. One is slightly different. So one of my clients told me that when people come back from maternity, she gives them a more difficult job. And she said she has had 100% people staying on and rising because she said they're so motivated with that trust and that because, faith. Because that is the opposite. Often people feel they need to take a step yeah. back, back, right? right. Oh, I've lost yeah. my experience. Yeah. I've lost my confidence. Yeah. So yeah. the opposite and is so what So she said doing. when you give them a less important job, they say, well, you know, should I leave my family? to do this mm. job that's meaningless. Mm. Whereas when you give them a greater challenge, they're motivated to, to mm. rise to that challenge and they manage their family. And they manage India, it, right? India, you know, women are super women, so right. that happens. <laughs> um, so and the other example I wanted to give you was with another client where they're doing a very active returnee program. Mm. And for that, they, do, they bring in the women after maternity who may have taken two, three, four years off and they put them through a two-month internship because women lose their confidence sitting at home and taking care of a baby. Mm. And they sort of lose the ability to, to re represent themselves at a senior level. So they give them a two-month internship, they do coaching for a week. It's very intensive. And then uh, I think the women regain their confidence right. and come right back and in. And both of them have a 100% retention rate. And these are Indian companies, Indian companies getting into senior level management. Getting into senior, mid to senior level. Right. I mean, that's a very progressive sounding policy. Not very common, I, I can imagine. Not no, it's not common, but you're very right. That's what uh, women expect. In this survey, the Rise Up to Women, that's the message they're sending to companies and to brands saying, you know, take care of that aspect of my life and make it a change. Yeah. And also what they are saying is that walk the talk. It's good that you're sponsoring or patronizing this and that initiatives, but do it in your company or do it in the government. Do not only sponsor someone else uh, that's mm. doing it. Yeah. Walk yeah. the talk. Make it real. Yeah. yeah. Make it real. And exactly. get the message out, right, that yeah. you're doing it. I mean, how do companies explain to the, to the public, to the, to the women out there, that they're a great place to come? I mean, you want to be a destination, right, for yeah, talent. Exactly. Yeah. This is a powerful message, isn't it, to get yeah. across? Well, it, it, I think it's hugely important for companies to share more about the, the work that you guys are doing around the uh, equality index, right? It's, mm. a, it's a way for companies to get the word out about mm. what they're doing to support uh, inclusion for everyone. And from a talent perspective, I know that particularly the, the generation that is, um, that is entering the workforce now or has, has entered the workforce over the last five years or ten years, that's what they look for. Um, yeah. So as a company, that, you know, if you're not playing in that game, if they don't see you as being uh, family-friendly, women-friendly, mm -hmm. inclusive, um, you're just going to lose you're out You're going to lose talent. the war for talent, yeah, right? Exactly. They're going to go somewhere else. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah absolutely. And, and an interesting point on that, you mentioned the CEO, the need for coming from the top. Yeah. Actually, uh, some governments are making laws to uh, have a certain number or percentage of women into boards, like the French mm. government did mm -hmm. that. So we can all say, well, this is quotas, and quotas are controversial. But at the end of the day, in 2011, there were less than 20% of women in boards in France, and now it's 41%. Mm. Uh, at the same time, CEOs signing for an increase of uh, women in, in uh, leadership is also something that makes a difference. There is an organization in Europe called Lead Network, who is focusing on uh, senior lead, advancing uh, senior women uh, into organizations. And actually, they have 25 CEOs, including Nielsen CEOs, who've signed the pledge. Yep. And these mm -hmm. are brands. Yep. These are yep. you know, advertisers that yep. can then change the message yep. based on the facts that they observe. Yeah. So so sorry, carry on. No, I was just going to say, similar in the US, you have the CEO Action Pledge, which um, our CEO has signed, and many, many other CEOs of big brands have signed. And it's committing them to actions around creating a more right. inclusive and, and diverse workforce. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. my question on that is this, is pl are pledges enough? Or do we need quotas for this? Should the government step in and say, you know, it is not acceptable to have 10% of the boards in a, in a country have female representation. We need it to be 30%, 40%. Is that too extreme, do you think, a measure? I think it's a talent issue. Honestly, I think, um, I, you know, I won't 
governments will do what governments do, and, they, and different governments will make different choices about it. I think, I think of it as a competitive talent issue, and so we are far more motivated by our ability to, to get and sustain great talent than we would be by a quota imposed by the government. I'm sure, I, I'm sure hi, my question is though, for companies at large, where you know, there's this inbuilt um, historical bias, you've got a board of all men, are they going to decide to do this themselves, or do they need to be forced into it? I think you know, in India, we have a law now that every, company, every right. listed company needs to have a woman independent yep. director. And Has that had a positive impact, do you think? Well, uh, so it's in the first term at the moment. Mm. And, um, and so some companies are saying, find me a woman director. And I object, and I say, well, I'll find you a director who is a woman, but let's find you a director, right. not a woman I'll director. I'll find you the best right? person. <laughs> exactly. Right. So, but I think as that one person goes on, it's not why they got there, it's the impact that they have. Mm. And then the second person will go on, and that will change. So do I yeah. ask for quotas? I think quotas help catalyze. And Maybe then a the, small quota. And then a small quota. And then that brings in a change. Exactly. Yeah. So I do think the change will happen. I mean, you can see, I mean, we just saw the gender equality index. You know, companies who are engaged in this question outperform, yeah. right? Yeah. You know, there is a big financial incentives and boards presumably are rewarded for the performance of their companies. So yeah, there should I, be an easy message here. I think the one danger is there are studies that say... There um, it is. There's the, there's the number. That, that having one woman on a board actually does it's not enough. It's not nearly it's not enough. enough. Yeah. And, and probably doesn't get you anything in terms of yeah. better performance. Um, so the, I think if you think about quotas, you have to keep that in mind as well. Is yep. how, it, companies who do it to meet the quota will do the one, and they won't actually see any difference. It really has to be something the company believes in yep. in order for it to actually make a difference. Right. So how do you incentivize then? So you can see the performance, outperformance that we just saw. Um, but do you, can you do anything else to get the CEO, to get the chairman? to change that culture, to, to promote more women, to insist on diverse slates? How do you use the, what carrot can you use to, to get them to change? Um, I don't have that issue in, in my company, but I think one of the things that um, is very um, uh, uh, important to CEOs is, the, is their peer comparison. Right. So I actually think things like the pledges, or um, public comparisons of performance make a big difference to CEOs. Mm. And, and if, so there's, there's one thing I would say that you, know, you can use is to, it, with your CEO is to say, look what such and such company yeah. is doing. That matters. So like the he for she pledge that we saw last night, we yes. had five uh, top CEOs up here. Hopefully their peers will say, Are you know looking what? In the paper yeah, saying, yeah, we want to be, want to be yeah, there yeah, too, yeah, right? Yeah, I want exactly. to be there too. We don't also, have a huge amount of time. I mean, I, what I really want to do is maybe just go around each of you and just with a takeaway for this audience. You know, there are so many things that we've just rattled through that companies can do, that the government can do. What's the most impactful thing that you'd like people to go and take away to their companies, to talk about with their boss that could really make a difference? Maybe starting with you, Marie. Yeah, so I would say in the media industry, what really matters is for the brands, the advertisers, the publishers, uh, and the content producers to actually please their content, please their audience. And uh, the, the way, it's a pressure, the way they can do that is by actually having facts that tells them what women and men uh, differences are and what they are expecting. And so uh, an advertising that's actually showing uh, male supporting female as the example instead of the advertising you were mentioning mm -hmm. is bringing it a very long way. Same in films. So content, developing the content that will make visibility for men and, and women of examples of different way of treating the gender uh, diversity will make a difference. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, two things I'd say. One is uh, reinforce uh, what I said earlier around the data. Know your yep. data. Uh, use your data to, like to influence. Like yes. Yep. <laughs> um, uh, and then the second thing I'd say specifically about gender, and we've heard a lot about this today, which is use and find and use male allies. Um, that is powerfully important that men are part mm -hmm. of the solution for helping to bring women into the workforce and help them to achieve. Um, and I, I probably disagree with the minister around allies and sponsors because they've been a big part of kind of right. my, uh, my career and I think they can, they can be a big part of many people's career. Absolutely. I think if you show business leaders what's in it for them, which is mm -hmm. better returns, uh, better um, 
and and it, you don't do it for the for the for, for doing good, but you do it for doing right. good business. That, that speaks to them. That's the key, and right? Good business is We all know it's about. the right thing to do, yeah. but it's the right thing for your business. That's Correct. the big message, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Well, to my, all my panelists, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.